Climate Change 2007, the fourth assessment report AR4 of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC, is the fourth in a series of reports intended to assess scientific, technical and socio-economic information concerning climate change, its potential effects, and options for adaptation and mitigation. The report is the largest and most detailed summary of the climate change situation ever undertaken, produced by thousands of authors, editors, and reviewers from dozens of countries, citing over 6,000 peer-reviewed scientific studies. It supersedes the third assessment report, 2001, and is superseded by the fifth assessment report. The headline findings of the report were, Warming of the climate system is unequivocal and most of the observed increase in global average temperatures since the mid-20th century is very likely due to the observed increase in anthropogenic greenhouse gas concentrations. Topic. Sections The report was released in four principal sections. Contribution of Working Group 1, WGI, Climate Change 2007, The Physical Science Basis. Contribution of Working Group 2, WGII, Climate Change 2007, Impacts, Adaptation and Vulnerability. Contribution of Working Group 3, WGIII, Climate Change 2007, Mitigation of Climate Change. Contribution of Working Groups I-2, and III, The Synthesis Report SYR. Topic. Working Group 1, The Physical Science Basis The full WGI report was published in March 2007, and last updated in September of that year. It includes a summary for policymakers SPM, which was published in February 2007, and a frequently asked questions section. This section of the report, Climate Change 2007, The Physical Science Basis, assessed current scientific knowledge of the natural and human drivers of climate change, as well as observed changes in climate. It looked at the ability of science to attribute changes to different causes, and made projections of future climate change. It was produced by 676 authors, 152 lead authors, 26 review editors, and 498 contributing authors from 40 countries, then reviewed by over 625 expert reviewers. More than 6,000 peer reviewed publications were cited. Before being approved, the summary was reviewed line by line by representatives of 113 governments during the 10th session of WGI, in January to February 2007. On the issue of global warming and its causes, the SPM states that warming of the climate system is unequivocal. Most of the observed increase in global average temperatures since the mid-20th century is very likely due to the observed increase in anthropogenic greenhouse gas concentrations. Very likely and likely mean. The assessed likelihood, using expert judgment, are over 90% and over 66%, respectively. Topic. Observations. The report notes many observed changes in the Earth's climate including atmospheric composition, global average temperatures, ocean conditions, and other climate changes. Topic. Changes in the atmosphere Carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide are all long-lived greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide have increased markedly as a result of human activities since 1750 and now far exceed pre-industrial values. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in 2005 379 ppm exceeds by far the natural range of the last 650,000 years 180 to 300 ppm. The amount of methane in the atmosphere in 2005 1774 ppb exceeds by far the natural range of the last 650,000 years 320 to 790 ppb. 
The primary source of the increase in carbon dioxide is fossil fuel use, but land use changes also make a contribution. The primary source of the increase in methane is very likely to be a combination of human agricultural activities and fossil fuel use. How much each contributes is not well determined. Nitrous oxide concentrations have risen from a pre-industrial value of 270 ppb to a 2005 value of 319 ppb. More than a third of this rise is due to human activity, primarily agriculture. Topic. Warming of the planet Cold days, cold nights, and frost events have become less frequent. Hot days, hot nights, and heat waves have become more frequent. Additionally, 11 of the 12 years in the period 1995 to 2006 rank among the top 12 warmest years in the instrumental record since 1880. Warming in the last 100 years has caused about a 0.74 degrees Celsius increase in global average temperature. This is up from the 0.6 degrees Celsius increase in the 100 years prior to the third assessment report. Urban heat island effects were determined to have negligible influence less than 0.0006 degrees Celsius per decade over land and zero over oceans on these measurements. Observations since 1961 show that the ocean has been absorbing more than 80% of the heat added to the climate system, and that ocean temperatures have increased to depths of at least 3,000 meters 9, feet. Average Arctic temperatures increased at almost twice the global average rate in the past 100 years. It is likely that greenhouse gases would have caused more warming than we have observed if not for the cooling effects of volcanic and human-caused aerosols. See Global Dimming. Average northern hemisphere temperatures during the second half of the 20th century were very likely higher than during any other 50-year period in the last 500 years and likely the highest in at least the past 1,300 years including both the medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age. Topic. Ice, snow, permafrost, rain, and the oceans The SPM documents increases in wind intensity, decline of permafrost coverage, and increases of both drought and heavy precipitation events. Additionally, mountain glaciers and snow cover have declined on average in both hemispheres. Losses from the land-based ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica have very likely greater than 90% contributed to sea level rise between 1993 and 2003. Ocean warming causes seawater to expand, which contributes to sea level rising. Sea level rose at an average rate of about 1.8 mm per year during the years 1961-2003. The rise in sea level during 1993-2003 was at an average rate of 3.1 mm per year. It is not clear whether this is a long-term trend or just variability. Antarctic sea ice shows no significant overall trend, consistent with a lack of warming in that region. Topic. Hurricanes. There has been an increase in hurricane intensity in the North Atlantic since the 1970s, and that increase correlates with increases in sea surface temperature. The observed increase in hurricane intensity is larger than climate models predict for the sea surface temperature changes we have experienced. There is no clear trend in the number of hurricanes. Other regions appear to have experienced increased hurricane intensity as well, but there are concerns about the quality of data in these other regions. It is more likely than not, greater than 50%, that there has been some human contribution to the increases in hurricane intensity. It is likely, greater than 66%, that we will see increases in hurricane intensity during the 21st century. Table SPM2 lists recent trends along with certainty levels for the trend having actually occurred, for a human contribution to the trend, and for the trend occurring in the future. 
in relation to changes including increased hurricane intensity, where the certainty of a human contribution is stated as more likely than not. Footnote F to table SPM 2 notes, magnitude of anthropogenic contributions not assessed. Attribution for these phenomena based on expert judgment rather than formal attribution studies. Topic. Factors that warm or cool the planet AR4 describes warming and cooling effects on the planet in terms of radiative forcing. The rate of change of energy in the system, measured as power per unit area in SI units, W per square meter. The report shows in detail the individual warming contributions positive forcing of carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, halocarbons, other human warming factors, and the warming effects of changes in solar activity. Also shown are the cooling effects negative forcing of aerosols, land use changes, and other human activities. All values are shown as a change from pre-industrial conditions. Total radiative forcing from the sum of all human activities is about plus 1.6 watts per square meter. Radiative forcing from an increase of solar intensity since 1750 is about plus 0.12 watts per square meter. Radiative forcing from carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide combined is very likely greater than 90% increasing more quickly during the current era 1750 present than at any other time in the last 10,000 years. Topic. Climate sensitivity Climate sensitivity is defined as the amount of global average surface warming following a doubling of carbon dioxide concentrations. It is likely to be in the range of 2 to 4.5 degrees Celsius, with a best estimate of about 3 degrees Celsius. This range of values is not a projection of the temperature rise we will see in the 21st century, since the future change in carbon dioxide concentrations is unknown, and factors besides carbon dioxide concentrations affect temperature. Topic. Model-based projections for the future Model projections are made based on an analysis of various computer climate models running within the different scenarios that were established in 2000 in the Special Report on Emission Scenarios, the SRES scenarios. As a result, predictions for the 21st century are as shown below. Surface air warming in the 21st century. Best estimate for a low scenario is 1.8 degrees Celsius with a likely range of 1.1 to 2.9 degrees Celsius 3.2 degrees Fahrenheit with a likely range of 2.0 to 5.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Best estimate for a high scenario is 4.0 degrees Celsius with a likely range of 2.4 to 6.4 degrees Celsius 7.2 degrees Fahrenheit with a likely range of 4.3 to 11.5 degrees Fahrenheit. A temperature rise of about 0.1 degrees Celsius per decade would be expected for the next two decades, even if greenhouse gas and aerosol concentrations were kept at year 2000 levels. A temperature rise of about 0.2 degrees Celsius per decade is projected for the next two decades for all SRES scenarios. Confidence in these near-term projections is strengthened because of the agreement between past model projections and actual observed temperature increases. Based on multiple models that all exclude ice sheet flow due to a lack of basis in published literature, it is estimated that sea level rise will be in a low scenario 18 to 38 centimeters 7 to 15 inches in a high scenario 26 to 59 centimeters 10 to 23 inches. It is very likely that there will be an increase in frequency of warm spells, heat waves and events of heavy rainfall. It is likely that there will be an increase in areas affected by droughts, intensity of tropical cyclones, which include hurricanes and typhoons, and the occurrence of extreme high tides. Sea ice is projected to shrink in both the Arctic and Antarctic. In some projections, Arctic late summer sea ice disappears almost entirely by the latter part of the 21st century. 
Scenario-specific projections are based on analysis of multiple runs by multiple climate models, using the various SRES scenarios. Low scenario refers to B1, the most optimistic scenario family. High scenario refers to A1FI, the most pessimistic scenario family. Topic. Temperature and sea level rise in the various scenarios. There are six families of SRES scenarios, and AR4 provides projected temperature and sea level rises, excluding future rapid dynamical changes in ice flow, for each scenario family. Scenario B1 Best estimate temperature rise of 1.8 degrees Celsius with a likely range of 1.1 to 2.9 degrees Celsius, 3.2 degrees Fahrenheit with a likely range of 2.0 to 5.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Sea level rise likely range 18 to 38 centimeters, 7 to 15 inches. Scenario A1T Best estimate temperature rise of 2.4 degrees Celsius with a likely range of 1.4 to 3.8 degrees Celsius, 4.3 degrees Fahrenheit with a likely range of 2.5 to 6.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Sea level rise likely range 20 to 45 centimeters, 8 to 18 inches. Scenario B2 Best estimate temperature rise of 2.4 degrees Celsius with a likely range of 1.4 to 3.8 degrees Celsius, 4.3 degrees Fahrenheit with a likely range of 2.5 to 6.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Sea level rise likely range 20 to 43 centimeters, 8 to 17 inches. Scenario A1B Best estimate temperature rise of 2.8 degrees Celsius with a likely range of 1.7 to 4.4 degrees Celsius, 5.0 degrees Fahrenheit with a likely range of 3.1 to 7.9 degrees Fahrenheit. Sea level rise likely range 21 to 48 centimeters, 8 to 19 inches. Scenario A2 Best estimate temperature rise of 3.4 degrees Celsius with a likely range of 2.0 to 5.4 degrees Celsius, 6.1 degrees Fahrenheit with a likely range of 3.6 to 9.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Sea level rise likely range 23 to 51 centimeters, 9 to 20 inches. Scenario A1FI Best estimate temperature rise of 4.0 degrees Celsius with a likely range of 2.4 to 6.4 degrees Celsius, 7.2 degrees Fahrenheit with a likely range of 4.3 to 11. 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Sea level rise likely range 26 to 59 centimeters, 10 to 23 inches. Topic. Selected quotes from the Working Group 1 Summary for Policymakers Both past and future anthropogenic carbon dioxide emissions will continue to contribute to warming and sea level rise for more than a millennium, due to the timescales required for removal of this gas from the atmosphere. Topic. Reaction to Working Group 1 In the weeks before publication of the first report, controversy broke out about the report's projections of sea level change, which in the new report was estimated at less than previous estimates. The now published text gives a warning that the new estimation of sea level could be too low. Dynamical processes related to ice flow not included in current models but suggested by recent observations could increase the vulnerability of the ice sheets to warming, increasing future sea level rise. The midpoints of the sea level rise estimates are within plus or minus 10% of those from the TAR, but the range has narrowed. Lord Rees, the president of the Royal Society, said, This report makes it clear, more convincingly than ever before, that human actions are writ large on the changes we are seeing, and will see, to our climate. The IPCC strongly emphasizes that substantial climate change is inevitable, and we will have to adapt to this. This should compel all of us—world leaders, businesses and individuals— 
towards action rather than the paralysis of fear. We need both to reduce our emissions of greenhouse gases and to prepare for the impacts of climate change. Those who would claim otherwise can no longer use science as a basis for their argument. U.S. Energy Secretary Samuel Bodman told a news conference that the report was sound science and as the president has said, and this report makes clear, human activity is contributing to changes in our Earth's climate and that issue is no longer up for debate. Kurt Volker, Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary for European and Eurasian Affairs, said, We support the recent IPCC report, in which U.S. scientists played a leading role. Based on the report, 46 countries in a Paris call for action read out by French President Chirac, have called for the creation of a United Nations Environment Organization UNEO, which is to have more power than the current United Nations Environment Program UNEP, and is to be modeled after the more powerful World Health Organization. The 46 countries included the European Union nations, but notably did not include the United States, China, Russia, and India, the top four emitters of greenhouse gases. Topic. Working Group 2, Impacts, Adaptation and Vulnerability Working Group 2's summary for policymakers was released on April 6, 2007. The full report was released September 18, 2007. WGII states that evidence from all continents and most oceans shows that many natural systems are being affected by regional climate changes, particularly temperature increases. Topic. Observations Some observed changes have been associated with climate change at varying levels of confidence. With a high confidence, about an 8 in 10 chance to be correct, WGII asserts that climate change has resulted in more and larger glacial lakes, increasing ground instability in permafrost regions, increasing rock avalanches in mountain regions, changes in some Arctic and Antarctic ecosystems, increased runoff and earlier spring peak discharge in many glacier and snow-fed rivers, Changes affecting algae, plankton, fish and zooplankton because rising water temperatures and changes in ice cover, salinity, oxygen levels, water circulation with a very high confidence, about a 9 in 10 chance to be correct, WGII asserts that climate change is affecting terrestrial biological systems in that Spring events such as the unfolding of leaves, laying of eggs, and migration are happening earlier. There are poleward and upward to higher altitude shifts in ranges of plant and animal species. WGII also states that the ocean has become more acidic because it has absorbed human-caused carbon dioxide. Ocean pH has dropped by 0.1, but how this affects marine life is not documented. Topic. Attribution of changes WGII acknowledges some of the difficulties of attributing specific changes to human-caused global warming, stating that limitations and gaps prevent more complete attribution of the causes of observed system responses to anthropogenic warming but found that the agreement between observed and projected changes was nevertheless sufficient to conclude with high confidence that anthropogenic warming over the last three decades has had a discernible influence on many physical and biological systems. Topic. Projections WGII describes some of what might be expected in the coming century, based on studies and model projections. Topic. Fresh water It is projected with high confidence that dry regions are projected to get drier, and wet regions are projected to get wetter. 
By mid-century, annual average river runoff and water availability are projected to increase by 10–40% at high latitudes and in some wet tropical areas, and decrease by 10–30% over some dry regions at mid-latitudes and in the dry tropics. Drought-affected areas will become larger. Heavy precipitation events are very likely to become more common and will increase flood risk. Water supply stored in glaciers and snow cover will be reduced over the course of the century. Topic. Ecosystems It is projected with high confidence that the resilience of many ecosystems is likely to be exceeded this century by a combination of climate change and other stressors. Carbon removal by terrestrial ecosystems is likely to peak before mid-century and then weaken or reverse. This would amplify climate change. Topic. Food It is projected with medium confidence about 5 in 10 chance to be correct that globally, potential food production will increase for temperature rises of 1 to 3 degrees Celsius, but decrease for higher temperature ranges. Topic. Coastal systems It is projected with very high confidence that Coasts will be exposed to increasing risks such as coastal erosion due to climate change and sea level rise. Increases in sea surface temperature of about 1 to 3 degrees Celsius are projected to result in more frequent coral bleaching events and widespread mortality unless there is thermal adaptation or acclimatization by corals. Many millions more people are projected to be flooded every year due to sea level rise by the 2080s. Topic. Objections to original WGII language U.S. negotiators managed to eliminate language calling for cuts in greenhouse gas emissions, according to Patricia Romero Lankow, a lead author from the National Center for Atmospheric Research The original draft read, However, adaptation alone is not expected to cope with all the projected effects of climate change, and especially not over the long run as most impacts increase in magnitude. Mitigation measures will therefore also be required. The second sentence does not appear in the final version of the report. China objected to wording that said, Based on observed evidence, there is very high confidence that many natural systems, on all continents and in most oceans, are being affected by regional climate changes, particularly temperature increases. When China asked that the word, very, be stricken, three scientific authors balked, and the deadlock was broken only by a compromise to delete any reference to confidence levels. Topic. Working Group 3, Mitigation of Climate Change Working Group 3's Summary for Policymakers SPM, was published on 4 May 2007 at the 26th session of the IPCC. The full WG3 report was published online in September, 2007. The IPCC convened in Bangkok on April 30 to start discussions on the draft summary, with the participation of over 400 scientists and experts from about 120 countries. At the full IPCC meeting on May 4, agreement was reached by the larger gathering of some 2,000 delegates. One of the key debates concerned a proposal to limit concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere to between 445 parts per million and 650 parts per million to avoid dangerous climate change, with pressure from developing countries to raise the lower limit. Despite this, the figures from the original proposal were incorporated into the summary for policymakers. 
The summary concludes that stabilization of greenhouse gas concentrations is possible at a reasonable cost, with stabilization between 445 ppm and 535 ppm costing less than 3% of global GDP. The WG3 report analyzes mitigation options for the main sectors in the near term, addressing also cross sectorial matters such as synergies, co benefits, and trade offs. It also provides information on long-term mitigation strategies for various stabilization levels, paying special attention to implications of different short-term strategies for achieving long-term goals. Topic. Mitigation in the short and medium term until 2030 The summary for policymakers concludes that there was a high level of agreement and much evidence that there is substantial economic potential for the mitigation of global greenhouse gas emissions over the coming decades, that could offset the projected growth of global emissions or reduce emissions below current levels, taking into account financial and social costs and benefits. The technologies with the largest economic potential within this timescale are considered to be the IPCC estimates that stabilizing atmospheric greenhouse gases at between 445 to 535 ppm CO2 equivalent would result in a reduction of average annual GDP growth rates of less than 0.12%. Stabilizing at 535 to 590 ppm would reduce average annual GDP growth rates by 0.1%, while stabilization at 590 to 710 ppm would reduce rates by 0.06%. There was high agreement and much evidence that a substantial fraction of these mitigation costs may be offset by benefits to health as a result of reduced air pollution, and that there would be further cost savings from other benefits such as increased energy security, increased agricultural production, and reduced pressure on natural ecosystems as well as, in certain countries, balance of trade improvements, provision of modern energy services to rural areas and employment. The IPCC considered that achieving these reductions would require a large shift in the pattern of investment, although the net additional investment required ranges from negligible to 5 to 10 percent. They also concluded that it is often more cost-effective to invest in end-use energy efficiency improvement than in increasing energy supply. In terms of electricity generation, the IPCC envisage that renewable energy can provide 30 to 35 percent of electricity by 2030, up from 18 percent in 2005, at a carbon price of up to 50 United States dollars per T, and that nuclear power can rise from 16% to 18%. They also warn that higher oil prices might lead to the exploitation of high carbon alternatives such as oil sands, oil shales, heavy oils, and synthetic fuels from coal and gas, leading to increasing emissions, unless carbon capture and storage technologies are employed. In the transport sector, there was a medium level of agreement and evidence that the multiple mitigation options may be counteracted by increased use, and that there were many barriers and a lack of government policy frameworks. There was high agreement and much evidence that, despite many barriers, particularly in the developing countries, new and existing buildings could reduce emissions considerably, and that this would also provide other benefits in terms of improved air quality, social welfare and energy security. Topic. Mitigation in the long term after 2030 The IPCC reported that the effectiveness of mitigation efforts over the next two or three decades would have a large impact on the ability to stabilize atmospheric greenhouse gases at lower levels, and that the lower the ultimate stabilization levels, the more quickly emissions would need to peak and decline. For example, to stabilize at between 445 and 490 ppm, resulting in an estimate global temperature 2 to 2.4 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial average, emissions would need to peak before 2015, with 50 to 85 percent reductions on 2000 levels by 2050. There was high agreement and much evidence that stabilization could be achieved by 2050 using currently available technologies, provided appropriate and effective incentives were put in place for their development, acquisition, deployment and diffusion, and that barriers were removed. 
For stabilization at lower levels the IPCC agreed that improvements of carbon intensity need to be made much faster than has been the case in the past, and that there would be a greater need for efficient public and private research, development and demonstration efforts and investment in new technologies during the next few decades. The IPCC points out that government funding in real absolute terms for most energy research programs has been flat or declining for nearly 20 years, and is now about half the 1980 level. Delays in cutting emissions would lead to higher stabilization levels and increase the risk of more severe climate change impacts, as more of the current high emission technologies would have been deployed. Among the measures that might be used, there was high agreement and much evidence that policies that put a price on the cost of carbon emissions could provide incentives for consumers and producers. Carbon prices of 5 to 65 United States dollars per TCO2 in 2030 and 15 to 130 United States dollars per TCO2 by 2050 are envisaged for stabilization at around 550 ppm by 2100. Topic: Synthesis report. A draft version of the synthesis report, said to be subject to final copy edit, was published on 16 November 2007. The synthesis report goes one step further than the first three Climate Change 2007 Working Group reports. It is the decisive effort to integrate and compact this wealth of information into a readable and concise document explicitly targeted to the policymakers. The synthesis report also brings in relevant parts some material contained in the full working group reports over and above what is included in the summary for policymakers in these three reports. It is designed to be a powerful, scientifically authoritative document of high policy relevance, which will be a major contribution to the discussions at the 13th Conference of the Parties in Bali during December 2007. In fact, this conference was postponed to December to allow the IPCC synthesis report to come out first. The six topics addressed in the synthesis report are Observed changes in climate and its effects, WGI and WGII Causes of change, WGI and WGIII Climate change and its impacts in the near and long term under different scenarios, WGI and WGIII. Adaptation and mitigation options and responses, and the interrelationship with sustainable development, at global and regional levels, WGII and WGIII. The long-term perspective, scientific and socio-economic aspects relevant to adaptation and mitigation, consistent with the objectives and provisions of the Convention, SIC, and in the context of sustainable development, WGI and WGIII. Robust findings, key uncertainties, WGI, WGII and WGIII, the Convention. Mentioned in Topic 5 is the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change UNFCCC. The key findings from the AR4 Synthesis Report will be discussed Wednesday 13 December 2007 at the United Nations Climate Change Conference UNFCCC COP13 CMP3 in Bali, Indonesia, which takes place 3-14 December see UNFCCC homepage. Topic. Anthropogenic warming could lead to some impacts that are abrupt or irreversible. The SPM states that, "...anthropogenic warming could lead to some impacts that are abrupt or irreversible, depending upon the rate and magnitude of the climate change." There is medium confidence that approximately 20 to 30 percent of species assessed so far are likely to be at increased risk of extinction if increases in global average warming exceed 1.5 to 2.5 degrees Celsius relative to 1980 to 1999. As global average temperature increase exceeds about 3.5 degrees Celsius, model projections suggest significant extinctions 40 to 70% of species assessed around the globe. 
Partial loss of ice sheets on polar land could imply meters of sea level rise, major changes in coastlines and inundation of low-lying areas, with greatest effects in river deltas and low-lying islands. Such changes are projected to occur over millennial time scales, but more rapid sea level rise on century time scales cannot be excluded. Topic. Criticism The fourth assessment report has been the subject of criticism. Skeptics of anthropogenic global warming contend that their claims are not sufficiently incorporated in the report. Others regard the IPCC as too conservative in its estimates of potential harm from climate change. The report has also been criticized for inclusion of an erroneous date for the projected demise of the Himalayan glaciers. Related to the subject of global warming in general, the IPCC Fourth Assessment Report has been discussed by various bodies such as government officials, special interest groups and scientific organizations. See the article, Politics of Global Warming, for a thorough discussion of the politics surrounding the phenomenon, and the positions of the various parties involved. The United Nations appointed an independent board of scientists to Review the workings of the world's top climate science panel, which reported in September 2010. See Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change hashtag Inter Academy Council Review. Topic. See also. Equals equals notes. <laughs>